Hey everybody, and thanks for joining us for another installment of Pancras, Legends of Mixed Martial Arts. I'm your host, Rob Wu, and sitting alongside me, as always, our fight insider, and he's the current King of Pancras champion, Josh Barnett. Now, Josh, I know you always say you're happy to be here, but are you really? No. No, it's all a facade. All right, well, let's get past that facade and get into our fights. Our first matchup, Satoru Kitaoka versus Hiroki Nagaoka and... Josh, we haven't seen either of these fighters previously. Uh, what do these guys bring to the table? Well, besides a couple of last names that are fairly hard to pronounce for most folks, uh, Kitaoka is actually a fairly accomplished grappler, though this is somewhat early on in his career. Kitaoka, uh, later, earlier this year, actually went on a whole streak of defeating uh, highly uh, accomplished Brazilian grapplers within the pancreas system. But... Uh, uh, at this point, this is really sort of an introduction for us to Kitaoka, and also somewhat more of an introduction to the closed fist, uh, more full MMA rules that Pancras would adopt later on. All right, let's see how he fares. Satoru Kitaoka versus Hiroki Nagaoka. And uh, Kitaoka, Josh, has, in his time in Pancras, has sort of des uh, developed a cult following. Yeah, in fact, Kitaoka has really become one of the top stars of Pancras currently. And uh, this will be interesting to see his, uh, some of his earlier work here. Early on, the fighter's in a clinch. And I noticed, Josh, in the later fights in Pancras, the referees aren't so quick uh, to break the fighters up from, uh, away from the ropes. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, they allow the fighters to, to work a little longer up against the ropes and close as rope escapes were no longer an issue. Kitaoka comes into this match with a 2-3-1 and one record, Nagaoka at 3-1, and one, so both fighters uh, haven't had that much ring experience just yet. Kitaoka here looking to really take this fight to the ground. Uh, he's been exchanging a few punches with uh, Nagaoka, but really uh, his strength, I think, is going to be getting on top, maybe looking for some ground and pound and uh, working for one of the submissions, actually the front choke being one of his favorites, as well as leg locks. And uh, Kitaoka is in the black trunks, Nagaoka in the white. The fighter's still in a clinch, and as you can see, uh, in the early days of Pancras, the referee probably would have already stepped up to break the fight, but uh, nowadays, in 2001, the uh, referee let the fighters actually fight it out. As we see Kitaoka in the corner, both fighters still in the clinch. And not a lot of action here right now, more of a stalemate as we move further along in the match, finding him still in the clinch with Kitaoka trying to work some knees to the midsection. Now, Josh, how long do the fighters have to be in that position for the referee to actually stop in and break them apart? That's really up to the referee's discretion. Personally, I would have broken them up quite a while ago, but uh, um, Really, both the, the real shame about this is one of the, the two of the fighters should really try to take advantage of keeping their opponent pressed into the, uh, the corner like this. If I was Nagaoka, I'd drop in, maybe try and suck up uh, Kitaoka's legs and get the double leg takedown as they break out of the corner and Kitaoka fires a few punches to get some space from his opponent. Stopping the takedown is Kitaoka. And back to the clinch they go. And away and again towards the rope. The fighters in the clinch, Nagaoka trying to throw some uh, punches to the face. Kitaoka lands a uh, right knee to the midsection against Nagaoka and uh, under attack but ending back in the clinch is Kitaoka with his back to the corner. Not much time left in the round and uh, Kitaoka really is going to have to should spin his opponent so that Nagaoka is now in the corner and therefore he could work a takedown with the use of the corner and the ropes to his advantage as they battle it out here in the clinch. And both fighters getting some good shots in and a knee by Nagaoka as the round comes to an end. And Josh, were you surprised at all that uh, Kitaoka didn't really try or wasn't successful in taking this fight to the ground? Actually, actually I was surprised that uh, Kitaoka didn't make more of an effort to take the fight to the ground, but uh, he did land some good, good strikes at the end there in those, that last exchange and a nice knee to the head. And this fight will go to the judges, who decide it is this will result in a... That's one for Kitaoka, one draw. Another draw, Nagaoka. 
and Kitaoka looks like this match will be a tie. Kitaoka uh, not too satisfied with the results, it seems. It seems like he felt he uh, got the better of the, of the exchanges and, and perhaps maybe controlled most of this match, but uh, really, if he wanted to, to really secure a win, he should have made more of an effort to get this fight to the ground and finish off his opponent, but we'll have to cut him some slack for uh, being uh, the youngster that he is at this point in his career. In our next fight, we're going to see two more fighters that we haven't seen before. It's Chris Lights Out Lytle versus Kazuo Misaki. And Josh, what are, all, what are these two fighters all about? Uh, Lytle is actually a uh, student of Jason Godsey's uh, and from the Integrated Fighting Academy in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Lytle will go on to go on to appear on the Ultimate Fighter TV show and make his way into the Ultimate Fighting Championships where he's had uh, some, in, some uh, bouts of success. Uh, but here he is early on in his career fighting against some of the, the strong fighters of Pancras. And here we have uh, Misaki, who would go on to become the Pride mm -hmm. Middleweight Grand Prix Champion. And at this point, Misaki undefeated. Let's see if he can keep that perfect record intact. Kazuo Misaki versus Chris Lytle. So it is Lytle charging forward with some one-twos and following up with a middle kick to the body against Misaki. And so far, Lytle taking it straight to the undefeated Misaki, but now Misaki has the guillotine on Lytle. Nice front choke attempt by Misaki, really trying to set his hips in there and lock that in. Lytle smartly not allowing Misaki to set his weight down. As Misaki will have to settle for uh, trying to get the, get the clinch on the ground and pass Lytle's guard. As we move on in the fight, Anna, if this fight is on the ground, Josh, do you give Misaki the advantage? Uh, yes, I do, uh, although uh, Lytle is looking to prove me wrong with a nice triangle choke attempt and Misaki. a power bomb by Misaki escaping. Just picked up Lytle and slammed him down on the ground. Now, in the old days of Pancras, Lytle would uh, get up, but now nowadays you are allowed to hit your, hit your opponent while he is down, so uh, Lytle has to the smart time to get up. Exchanging kicks, Misaki looking for an opportunity to either uh, get in and pass that guard or chop away at the legs of Lytle as he's on his back. Now you, you use the word pass, Josh. What does that actually mean? That just is a term to uh, basically escape the legs or get around them so that uh, getting clear to your, to your opponent and getting, side, getting a position where you don't have to deal with his legs wrapped around your body. Right. And Lytle does get up and now both fighters are up on their feet. Exchanging kicks. Misaki is starting to move in on Lytle, perhaps trying to get offensive. And next thing you know, they'll start cursing at him. Nice and hip toss by Misaki. And now Lytle reverses and now Lytle in the full guard position. Reversal of sorts with uh, Misaki now having to work off of his back. And uh, Lytle throwing some body punches at Misaki. Uh, might not knock him out, but could take its toll uh, throughout the course of this fight. Misaki locking up the, getting double underhooks, looking for a crucifix type submission as we go further on in the match. Misaki still on his back working against Lytle as Lytle attempts to stay busy inside the guard of Misaki. And even though his name is Lights Out Lytle, uh, Chris Lytle does know how to work on the ground. Yeah, he is quite the submission repertoire and, and really has, uh, I believe, the majority of his wins are actually by submission. Right. Lytle continuing to throwing those right body shots. Misaki with that underhook looking to reverse position, sticking his, uh, getting one of his hooks inside and elevating Lytle, but uh, unsuccessful in toppling Lytle off balance and getting on top. So Josh, what does Misaki have to do to get Lytle off of? Well, he's got two choices. One is to go to a submission and either work for the finish or use uh, Lytle's uh, escape to try and open himself up into a reversal or to go for a different submission, uh, chain them together. Or more commonly, what he'll probably try and do is get his legs inside and try to elevate uh, Lytle's hips up. And once he's once his weight is up in the air, then Misaki will try and off-balance him and put him on his back in exchange positions. And so far, Lytle doing a great job keeping Misaki where he is and 
still throwing those body shots. Yeah, uh, Lytle really sort of pressing inside uh, Misaki's guard to stay tight to his body and continue to chip away with those short punches. Uh, Misaki not getting any space to work hardly. Yeah, it looks like Misaki's 5-0 record could be in danger right now. Misaki unable to must even get on his feet and although he looks like he has the arm of Lytle. Nice double wrist lock attempt by Misaki. Can he finish? And Lytle Ooh. slips out of it. Taking the back now is Lytle against Misaki. Nice attempt by Misaki but uh, unfortunately unable to capitalize. And the round is over. So uh, this will once again go to the judges. We got a glimpse of Alex Stiebling in Lytle's corner. 16-man Brazilian heavyweight tournament champion is Stiebling. That's a good man to have in your corner, Josh. And the judges give this fight to uh, Chris Lytle. And Josh, I have to say, I agree with that. He had Misaki down on the mat uh, for most of the match, delivered the body shots, and Misaki just didn't really cause much damage to Lytle. Had his arm for a second, but Lytle slipped away. Right, there was just so much control on the part of Lytle and, and, and good opportunities taken by Lytle on the feet to score well uh, also. So uh, even with the nice, uh, even with the submission attempt towards the end there and the power bomb, it's really sort of difficult to, to, to look and give this fight in any favor to Misaki. And a huge boost of confidence to Chris Lytle. Not sure if he needs it, but it is a huge boost. Misaki was undefeated, so uh, Chris Lytle took out a pretty uh, credible opponent. Yeah, way to move up for Lytle. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, the wrestler they call the punk enters the ring. Yeah. 